Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and as I briefly mentioned last week, I recently got a box of stuff from Endless Stationery in India. I'd love to drag this box of stuff out into a few different videos, but I'm heading to Europe for the month of September, so I'd better get this out of the way while I can. If you don't know the backstory here, I recommend that you watch my videos about regalia paper. I'll try to link them below. The quick version of this story is that when I first tried regalia, I thought it was amazing, and it passed all of my tests with flying colors. The second time I tried it, in the Observer Notebook, the paper was defective. I communicated with Endless Stationery about it for months as they investigated and tracked down the root of the problem, and they eventually told me this. We think we're at the bottom of this. From what we've understood, it was specific to a machine, temperature, and coating issue that went down. We are unable to recreate the problem now, and all the recent products have been good. Now, it seems that we've had a bit of miscommunication after that. I thought that they were going to send me some examples of their newest runs of paper to test. In fact, they sent me a mix of papers that they had on hand, so I'll explain as I go along. First, let me show you what was in the box. In this little box on top, we have a notebook clip. I have a couple of these, and they're great for when you have a notebook that doesn't quite lie flat while you're writing. And here we have the companion pen pouch. The label at the bottom of this says that this is a two pen pouch. In the next box, we have a larger companion pen pouch. This one's a five pen pouch, also made of leather. Then in the cloth bag, we have the classic endless recorder made with regalia paper. This one has a dot grid, which wasn't shipping yet when I got my first recorder. This cloth bag is a little bit different than the old one that I had. It's much more gauzy, and it reminds me a bit of that homespun cutty cloth that I talked about with the Suleika Swadeshi inks. And finally, in this box, as you can see, we have the Endless Explorer leather notebook cover, and one large storyboard notebook made with regalia paper. Let me show you each of these things in a little bit more detail, and then I'll test out the papers. Here we have the little notebook clip box. I will open this up. And here you can see the clip is round and says, hold that thought, which is sort of clever. The clip itself has a spring that's gentle enough to be easy to use, but strong enough to actually hold and be useful. I'll use this later when I'm testing the papers. Now, here's the first of the two companion pen pouches. This one is intended to hold two pens. I'll just open up this box, and there's a layer of tissue paper, and there it is. That is some nice looking leather. The zipper pull is of course also leather, and on one side it has the Endless logo on it. That's good and solid, and it looks really nice. And of course, the Endless logo is also stamped into the leather of the case itself. This leather has a soft suede-like surface, and it feels wonderful. It looks like it has good quality machine stitching around the edge. And the zipper works smoothly, that's good. I have no patience for dry, sticky zippers. Inside, we have a darker brown suede lining. And this is a nice touch. There's some contrasting stitching that's sort of a light teal. So with the exterior leather, we get that orange and teal color scheme that's so popular with cinematic color grading these days. Anyway. There are two loops to hold pens, but the loops are both part of an adjustable strap, so you can add large pens or narrow pens, and it should hold them all equally well. And you can tighten it by pulling on this end of the strap near the middle of the fold. Man, that's a gorgeous pen. This is my Lotus Everest, in case you're curious. In the center of the fold, there's another loop, and Endless indicates that it's intended for holding a spare ink cartridge. 
But it seems that the only cartridges that I have handy are slim ones, and they don't really fit very well. It will hold a cartridge converter, and it's actually big enough that it could hold an extra nib unit, especially in one of these PenBBS nib key rings. And of course, that means that it would also probably hold a third pen. But with the big nib unit in there, the case zips up just fine, plenty of space in there, even with a moderately large pen in the central loop. And the price is only 40 bucks, which is about what I paid for my little traveler's notebook, I think, which is just a single flap of leather, so not bad. Okay, now here's the bigger version of the pouch that holds five pens. Endless also makes a middle size that holds three pens, apparently. And this one is black leather. I think I prefer the brown, but this black looks really classy too. And again, this leather has that soft, fuzzy finish that just really feels wonderful in my hands. The exterior of this pouch is pretty much the same, but a larger size. It has the same stamped logo on the back and on the zipper pull. Again, it's a nice metal zipper that slides smoothly without snagging or getting stuck on the corners. And inside of this one, you can see that one of their pocket-sized storyboard notebooks fits into one side. The back cover of the notebook slides into a pocket between the lining and the outer leather on the side. I'll just go ahead and remove this now since I'm gonna be testing the paper in it later on. This should be from a recent run of Regalia paper. On the other side, there are five pen loops, and again, you can pull on this strap to tighten it up, but it'll fit pens of every size. I'll just adjust this loop to be a bit bigger. And here's a Ranga Abimanyu Grand. And over here in one of the smaller loops, this is a Caramel Brown Abimanyu. Again, the whole thing is nicely made, and I do really appreciate the flexibility with pen sizes. And it costs $50, which again, is not too bad. And that brings us to the recorder. If you want all of the details about these notebooks, I recommend that you watch my previous video about the recorder and regalia paper. But this one has the same color scheme. But instead of having standard horizontal ruling, this one has a dot grid, and more importantly, Endless says that it's a recently produced notebook. Inside the front cover, there's a little booklet with a sticker inside and a product number. And if we consider this as a serial, this number is about 4,000 units later in the series than my original recorder, for whatever that's worth. Later on, I'll test it and see if the paper is as good as my original paper. But first, in this box, there is an Endless Explorer. Let me open this up again. I was actually really excited about this one and I opened it up previously. The packaging was nicer looking the first time. But here it is. This is the Blue Leather Explorer. Again, this leather feels amazing. I love this stuff. And the combination of the deep blue and the warm colors in the elastic bands that hold it closed and hold the notebooks looks really sharp. Taking a look in the box here, there's a product number of 466124, which is about 1,000 units higher than my recorder. But Endless told me that the storyboard that was inside of this Explorer was from a questionable batch of paper, so this will get tested too. This large storyboard notebook also has a dot grid. And here's a better look at the elastic bands that contrast so nicely with the deep blue of this leather. Again, on the back cover, the Endless logo is stamped into the leather. Now, I still wish that Endless had made the Explorer a standard A5 size. Here it is compared with another Indian notebook cover that I have. This one was made by Kagazi, and you can see that it's significantly larger. Luckily, the storyboard refills for the Explorer are reasonably priced enough that I probably won't mind using them exclusively. And I almost missed it, but here in the bottom of the Explorer box, there's another little box, and this one contains a pen loop for the Explorer. 
I believe that this is intended to go around the entire exterior of the notebook. And that works well, but I actually think that this works a lot better with a hardcover notebook where I can just attach it to the front cover and not have to remove the loop to open up the notebook every time. Either way though, it's a nice matching leather pen loop. And finally, that brings us to the paper tests. These are the three notebooks that we'll be looking at. The small storyboard with new paper, the large storyboard with dubious paper, and the recorder, which also should have new paper. I'm gonna start with this bottle of Krishna Sailor Blue ink on the recorder, which comes in one of their new triangular bottles that I really like. I'm um, sorry about the focus here. My camera really liked the bottle too, apparently. But as it dried, I didn't see any of the telltale freckles that I had seen with the bad batch of paper. And once that's dried a bit, I'll flip the page over, and on the back you can see that the ink didn't bleed through at all. Except maybe a single pinprick of ink up at the top here where the ink had pooled a bit. And that sort of thing is to be expected even with the most expensive papers. Okay, the next ink up is a Birmingham Pen Company ink called Polar Shadow. I'll swab the top of this page with it, and that's looking good. Also, no freckles up there. And as that's drying, here's another Birmingham ink, but this is a sheening ink called Electric Patina. Down in the bottom left corner of this swatch, you can see a semi-bare spot that proves that regalia paper is not immune to problems caused by skin oils, but it does seem somewhat better than Cosmo in that regard. I guess I put down a little more ink than necessary here, and it's taking its sweet time to dry, but I really like the color of this polar shadow. This is the first time that I've opened the bottle, I think. And the same thing with this electric patina. This regalia is giving me plenty of sheen. And turning the page over, again, there's a little bit of bleed through where the ink pooled heavily, but no more than you'd expect from any premium paper where the ink is pooled. And down at the bottom of the page, again, just a tiny bit of bleed through where the ink was heaviest. There's practically no ghosting here, and that big swatch on the other side is fairly dark ink, so that's impressive. Okay, so let's move on to the storyboards. First of all, it's sort of interesting to see the differences between these. The little guy has a label page on the inside cover for your name and dates and that sort of thing, and then this is the dot grid. But on the larger storyboard, there's no label page, we just immediately get the dot grid. And with the papers next to each other, you can see that the dot grid pattern on the newer small storyboard is a little bit darker. Or maybe it's just that the dots are a little bit larger than on the older large storyboard. Let's see how they handle ink. Here on the large storyboard, I'm going to start with this. This is a green, Indian-made fountain pen ink from Suleika. Now here in the middle of the page, I'll go with a Krishna ink called Gut Green. As I'm looking at the swatch at the top of the page now, I'm seeing some freckles appearing in the heavy areas, which is not promising although also not completely unexpected. Down at the bottom of the page, I'll go with Birmingham Apple Snail. And it doesn't take long before some pretty prominent freckles appear all across the heavy areas of the Apple Snail, and looking up at the Krishna Green, there are quite a few there too. The freckles do start to disappear as they dry, and I think this is dry enough to turn over the page without making too big of a mess. And yes, uh, as we were expecting, there's some serious bleed through here all around the page. Okay, so now let's see if the newer paper in the pocket-sized storyboard is really any better. 
I'm going to start off with some Pelican Royal Blue. And now some Birmingham Armadillo. And finally, some Daytone Bottle Green. No, this bottle has an inner cap that I can't get off, so I'll have to go with this Ferris Wheel Press Ink instead. My swabs won't fit into the mouth of this bottle, so I'll just use a paintbrush, I guess. I put more ink down there than I intended, but in all three inks, I don't see any freckles yet, so that's good. I'll let these dry a bit. And now let's take a look at the other side. Interesting. There's no bleed through at all with the royal blue, and just a touch with the armadillo. There's a little bit more with the ferris wheel press, but again, only where the ink had pooled heavily. And interestingly, all of the bleed through is focused around the dots in the dot grid. So for all practical purposes, this regalia paper is excellent. When it comes to heavy ink swatches, it seems to be as good as 68 GSM Tomoe River at controlling bleed through, and it's similar to other high performance Japanese papers, but sometimes it lags behind. Cosmo Air Snow is still consistently better. Let me show you a couple more examples. Here we have some Tomoe River 68 GSM, here's some Cosmo Air Snow, here's some Aerofoil, and here's a page from the little storyboard. I'm going to begin with some dominant industry ink on these. This one is a pen chalet exclusive called Horseshoe Bend. Okay, now here's something a bit more challenging. This is Noodler's Base State Blue. And finally, this is a Sheening ink. This is Birmingham Emerald Fusion. With the inks mostly dry, I can start flipping them over. And the Tomoe River has quite a bit of bleed through from the Horseshoe Bend, and a decent amount from the Bay State Blue, but none from the Birmingham ink. The Cosmo Air Snow had almost no bleed through with the Bay State Blue, and just a couple of areas of bleed through with the Horseshoe Bend. and the Aerofoil has more bleed through with both the Bay State Blue and the Horseshoe Bend, but not as much as the Tomoe River. And finally, looking at the back of the regalia, it behaved as well as any of the others with the Horseshoe Bend, maybe the best of the four. But with the Bay State Blue, it is probably the worst of the four, or at least in about the same range as the Tomoe River. So the results are not very consistent, but from this test, it looks as though the regalia can hold its own with some of the best Japanese papers on the market, and in some ways it's better. It definitely gave me better sheen with this Birmingham ink than the Tomoe River. But then I did another test also, this time with Pelican Royal Blue instead of Bay State Blue and I used a piece of a page from the new recorder or notebook. And here it was pretty clear that the regalia was the worst of the bunch. Still not bad, but not as good as some of these Japanese papers. 
This video has sprawled a little bit, so let me sum up. The leather pouches and covers from Endless are wonderful. They're beautiful and functional, well-designed and well-made. They're expensive enough that they'll still have stiff competition from places like Galen Leather, but they're certainly not overpriced. As for regalia paper, for all practical purposes, this regalia paper is excellent. I love the fact that it's a clean white paper that shades and sheens well without significant feathering, ghosting, or bleed through with normal use. Regalia paper is an excellent option for those of you who will be filling your notebook pages with writing, even if you're using poorly behaved inks. When regalia is good, it's very good, right up there with my favorite Japanese papers. At the moment, I'm taking Endless Stationery at their word that the good papers that I received are from recent production, and that they have their manufacturing issues sorted out, so I'd be willing to order new Regalia paper products directly from their website, and I certainly will over the next few months to test and see what I end up with. Unfortunately, there will still be some imperfect Regalia out there on store shelves. Ideally, I'd like to see Endless sell off their imperfect paper at a steep discount so that people would have confidence that what they're buying at full price will be the good stuff. But I don't know whether that's even possible. I guess I'll have to leave that up to them. Anyway, now you know what I know. I hope that some of you have found this interesting or useful, and I will be back soon with a couple of new fountain pen reviews and maybe some inks too. And that's it! Stay safe out there, everyone, and enjoy your fountain pens and ink.